Welcome, everybody, to a special edition of Jersey Baseball Nation today as we look forward to the 2022 Garden State Baseball Coaches Clinic, an exciting event coming up in Kenilworth at Gamers Baseball uh, in uh, Kenilworth, as I said, next month, Friday, December 9th. We have an amazing lineup of coaches, some of the best coach and coaching minds in the country coming to Central Jersey. I hope you all get a chance to come out and learn from them. We've got two of them today. We welcome to the show Coach Mike Stowski from Mary Harden Baylor uh, down in Texas. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. And Coach Steve Trimper, uh, familiar to, for, to New Jersey, grew up in Newton, um, now down at Stetson University. He's got a bunch of Jersey guys on his roster this year getting ready to, uh, to take on the Atlantic Sun Conference. Welcome, Coach Trimper. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me on today. Always. Thanks. Uh, thanks for stopping by, both of you. We'll start with this question, because you both obviously are Southern coaches, great climates. Um, Mary Harden Baylor, for those who don't know, about halfway, I guess, in between Dallas and uh, San Antonio, right? Dallas and Austin. Um, Coach Trimper, Deland, Florida. About an hour from Daytona, I believe, right? Just uh, west. Yeah, we're actually about 20 minutes from Daytona, about an hour um, hour from uh, Orlando. Kind of in okay. between. There. Okay, so sort of in between the two? Yeah. What brings you to, to, to Central Jersey in uh, December? Why are, we, why are we leaving the comforts of home to, uh, to come north? And uh, Coach Stowski, we'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it always goes back to growing the game of baseball. You know, uh, anytime we get a chance to kind of get in front of a group of coaches and and talk about, you know, the game and, and grow what we do. Um, you know, I, I, I remember this is my 17th year in the game and and I still feel like a, a young pup in this game. But I still remember reaching out to guys and trying to figure out what I was doing when I got in this game and asking a million questions and um so now it feels weird when people call me to ask questions and and find out what I know um I'm like well I just got the phone people trying to find out what they know um so it's always an honor when I get asked to to do these and and go around the country and and talk about you know uh different parts of the game so um and I'm a northerner I'm from Chicago so um so the New Jersey weather I'm I we don't get a lot of changes we don't get you know we we're, the trees are just kind of moving now we don't we don't get snow and slush and all that. So I don't say I miss that by any means, but uh, when I land in, in New Jersey in December, uh, it'll feel just like home again. Warm. It'll be warm for you. It will, it will be. <laughs> Coach Trimper, same, right? You, you've got, you're filling North Jersey weather. I guess that's why you, you went South, but uh, you, you miss us. You miss the pizza. You miss stuff like that too much, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, I do. Obviously, you know, I, I, great ties to New Jersey. I, I look forward to this every year when, you know, uh, Chris Roof, Coach Roof calls me and asks me to speak at this. JT Kroger, I, I get to see all my my guys up there that really we played against each other, I guess, back in high school in Legion baseball when, you know, Sussex County would go down to Breslin Field there in, uh, uh, um, you know, over by New York City off the off the river yeah, there. And we'd play a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of country bumpkins would come down there from the Sussex County. But um you know, it's just, a, it's a great state for recruiting. You know, I spent my whole entire career in the Northeast. You know, I, you know, I finished up my college career in Connecticut. Then I coached in Boston, coached in Vermont, coached in Manhattan college for seven years. Yep. Got back to kind of my Jersey ties and recruiting when I was at Manhattan. And then I went to university of Maine for 12 seasons. It was hard to get Jersey guys up to Maine, you know, like that's a, that's a tough sell. I actually had a better sell going to Florida and get the Dade County kids to go up there. And, uh, so obviously when I got the Stetson job, you know, it, it it's a more attractive place, I think, for a New Jersey recruit to get down to warm weather. As coach said, you know, the, the weather's different, um, you know, year round. We just started fall baseball. We would have been ending if I was, you know, coaching at Seton Hall or St. John's or somewhere right now, Rutgers. Um, and I lived that life. I lived the gym floors, the domes, the trying to find practices at 6 a.m. and sharing with other teams. So I, I know that that I don't want to call it pain. I just know that that's what you have to do um, to get through it. And so it does time, sometimes create that little bit more of that toughness um, as you, as you get forward. But, you know, uh, I think we, we gravitate to recruit to people that we trust. And, you know, when I get a call from some of these coaches that I know so well for 20, 30 years, um, you know, my, my dad was a, 
the athletic director and football coach and wrestling coach at Hopakon High School for his entire career. So, you know, you start looking at Pope John and, and you know, Lenape Valley and Walk Hill, and, you know, it just kind of br branches off from there where I get a lot of people calling me that give me good tips and you trust those guys. So you go and watch those players and, and they gravitate to your school if it's a good fit. Yeah, now you both mentioned northern and, and toughness and cold weather. Do you uh, – we'll start with, with Coach Stowski here. Recruiting northern guys, you know, is there is there a certain edge about them? Um, do you feel like they can bring that to a, a program? Because obviously you got a lot of Texas guys, um, but, but you know, players from the north, you see a little bit of a difference as far as where they grew up and, you know, how they've got to – adapt and fight for some things that that maybe other guys are used to yeah i mean there's absolutely no doubt about it and we've put a priority on trying to get those guys in the door here um you know th those we, we we've asked our guys uh you know if you lived up north i'm not sure you would still be playing baseball because man you gotta you gotta hit in a cage for six months a year and and you gotta take ground balls on a on a gym floor and you know, you're throwing bullpens indoors in a little tunnel and, you know, the catcher's throwing it back in the top of the cage. You go run, get the ball and go back to the mound. There's no rhythm in that and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, you have to really love the game a little bit differently. And, and, and there's no, like we say all the time, like you, you just can't, you can't complain about those things because the, the walls and those indoor facilities and the cages are not getting any bigger. It's just, it is what it is. It's dark and, we're doing a lot. I mean, I remember up in Chicago, we're doing live hitting above our gym in one little small cage with like what felt like a light bulb above the cage. And I got guys throwing 88 miles an hour in the dark to our hitters and our hitters have no chance. Right. Um, and our pitchers think that they're all Sandy Koufax up there. But, you know, it, it's like it, it created this kind of toughness. Um, and, you know, you just don't get that down here. I mean, it's going to be 78 degrees here today you know and it's like and when it's 68 our guys are in hooded sweatshirts wondering if we're going to cancel practice you know um so we do miss that I do miss that we just had a meeting yesterday with the coaching staff about that like we miss that kind of like weird toughness of like we're just going to have to figure it out the one cage it's a little cold outside um so we do make it a priority to go up north get some midwestern kids um, we, we love the East coast kids as well. We've done that as well to go get those guys that just kind of have to just figure out a, a like a, just a grittier way to, to, to get better. Um, so there's no, no doubt about it, that those guys bring a little bit different level to the game. Now coach, tell, tell us a little bit about Mary Harden Baylor. Um, you know, like I said, for those of us in, in New Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania that, that aren't familiar, you're certainly dealing with one of the top D three programs in the country. Um, location wise, kind of right, kind of in the middle of Texas, um, you know, a lot of great other uh, schools in the area as far as competition. But but tell us about the school and, and you know, you left a, a position, you left a job, you had the chance to, to coach at Concordia in, in Chicago, in your backyard, built that into a, the number one team in the country in D3 in uh, 2019, right? Won two dozen straight games, 24 in a row. Um, what made you leave there, you know, home to, to go to Mary Harden Baylor? It's gotta be something special. Yeah, it's a really special place here. Um, anybody in the Northeast that plays football knows who we are. Um, we, you know, won national championship in 16, 18 and 21 when the reigning national championships and uh, champions in football. Um, we just have, you know, our location is great. We're 45 minutes North of Austin and we're, we're within two hours of the four major metropolitans, Dallas, Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. So the locale is 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 tremendous. Um, you know, weather, I, I can't speak enough about it for being an outdoor coach, um, especially coaching in the north for for 14 of my years. Um, but you know, I, I say all the time, I don't think that Texas has more talented players than uh the guys in the north, the northeast, or the west. What I do think though is there's just more of them here. So when I need to go get a shortstop that was going to really kind of lift our next class up, there might have been four or five of those guys in Illinois and the surrounding area. Well, those four guys were going to get eaten up immediately by Northern Illinois, Illinois State, a junior college in Western Michigan. All right, well, now we have to compromise who we're going to go get. We have to go get the next tier guy who may not be a guy that's going to help us win the World Series. We just have to go get the next tier guy. Well, there's not four of those guys here. There's 44 of those guys here. So they're, they're not more talented than the kid in Illinois. There's just more of them. And 
And I think because the pool is so great, we no longer have to compromise who we want. If we needed a left-handed hitting outfielder that can run, there's 30 of them here. We just got to go get them. Um, and yeah, there's going to be 15 or 20 that are going to sign at all these different places, but there's still some left over if we just work hard enough to go get them. Um, so, you know, great education. Uh, it's a Christian school. Um, and, uh, you know, the the biggest thing is we have a leadership team here. And this is what really drove us is that we have a leadership team that's committed to athletics. Um, you know, they built a $40 million football facility. Um, they put, built a $6 million soccer facility. And they're, they just announced, which is just made public, I think maybe on Friday, um, they're working with Ben Crenshaw to put in a state-of-the-art golf facility on campus. So our when my athletic director is a former baseball coach and player here, and my president is a former baseball coach and player here. So when you have all that combined together, um, it just makes for a really good situation for me. So we're looking forward to kind of what's coming next. You got me hooked with the Ben Crenshaw and the golf. So I'm, I'm, you recruited me, no problem. But well, I said when they, when they put that facility in, I think our program is going to take a small step back in recruiting just for a little bit. My short game will get a little bit better and then we'll go back to being pretty good. That's right. You're off the road for a little bit once then, ready. <laughs> Coach Trimper, you uh, mentioned earlier that it was tough to get Jersey guys to go up to Maine. Doesn't seem to be the problem anymore at uh, at Stetson. You've got some of you know down there already. Some of my favorite guys. You know, shout out to Drew Wires, to uh, Lorenzo Miola, uh, David Bermudez as a uh, as a grad student, Jackson Edelman, um, bunch of Jersey guys. Um, don't really have to sell guys from up here on Stetson if you just mention Jacob Degrom, obviously. Um, <laughs> But but tell us about the school itself, you know, and 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 where the program is, and you know, one step away from the College World Series a few years ago, and you know, obviously, hopefully, trying to get back. Yeah, you know, to speak on the on the Jersey, you know, connection and the Jersey recruiting and the Northeast recruiting that Coach mentioned first, you know, like I, I think it really gets down to the culture of your program. You know, like I, I think there's tough kids in Florida, there's tough kids in Maine, there's tough kids in New Hampshire, New Jersey. And what it is, it's bringing those guys in and they kind of feed off each other. And then that's the culture that you sustain. Um, you know, I, I think the difference is it's the gratitude sometimes is is probably what we kind of say is toughness, where like I'll use David Bermudez as an example. This kid and I worked at Manhattan, so it's a great school. Uh, in fact, I'm going up there in two weeks to, to go to their their dinners and benefits and a fundraiser for them. I still have a special place in my heart for it. And obviously it's right on the border of New Jersey, but like David Bermudez was living at home, driving across the bridge every day, dragging screens down to Van Cortland Park, you know, across Broadway because you couldn't leave him there because they weren't going to be there the next day. You know, so now all of a sudden he comes here and he's like, wow, we got a stadium. We got our own locker room. We got, you know, nice gear. And so I think that those are all rewards. That's not our success level. That's just the rewards that we have at this level. And his gratitude is, is, is contagious to the locker room. You know, he's got to tell one story about dragging an L screen across the, 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 the broad, Broadway there. And I remember doing it and, um, and I got millions of stories about that place, but you know, now our guys kind of be like, Oh, wow. You know, we really got to appreciate what we have and let's get here and let's grind it out a little bit more. So I do think there's a little edge to those players. Um, you know, we, we, I'm from New Jersey. I think we talk a little faster and we talk a little bit more, but um, you know, it, at the end of the day, we, we, we wear our emotions on our sleeve, I think as a, as a stereotype. Um, so I like that the fact that we bring those in and, and, you know, before you know it, the, the Latin kid that we got from Dade County is acting just like, you know, the kid from New Jersey and vice versa. So I think that that's the culture that you build that you want to call toughness. And, and, you know, as you go forward, um, you know, Stetson, it's a beautiful place. I mean, you know, when you get to campus here, it's it's ranked as the top five most beautiful campuses in, in the in the South. Um, our, our academics are really, really strong here. Um, I, for the Northeast people that are listening, you know, we, we compare, I compare ourselves to like a Lehigh, a Lafayette, a Holy Cross, as far as the academic kids we're getting. Um, and, uh, you know, it's in a beautiful town of Deland. They support baseball so much here. And we have a unique situation that our stadium, Melching, State, Melching Field, is actually owned by the city. So we're on the south end of Main Street when the quick campus is on the north end. So you got a mile stretch of all these restaurants and eateries. 
and shops. Then you get to the stadium, but we're the only sole tenants of this place. So we, we share the facility. In fact, as we speak, there might be some noise going on. We're in the middle of our phase one construction project, which I'm hoping is done for February 1st. I'm really getting nervous right now, but so we're putting $7.5 million into the stadium today. And then we have a second phase that's starting up where there's an upwards another $9 million that's going in in the next year. So it's going to be one of the nicest facilities in, in the South, uh, you know, and certainly in Florida, I'll put it up against anybody down here. You know, we, we do, we're 20 minutes from the beach over at New Smyrna or Daytona. Um, you know, you got the Orlando life, you got everything that's really here and easy to get to it. So I think it is a good sell for someone looking for good academics that wants to get down to the warmer climate. Um, and yes, you've had a lot of success. Coach Dunn before me had some great teams. We were able to get into some, you know, 18, 19, you know, before COVID, we really had some good runs. You know, that 18 team was one of the best I've ever had ever. And, you know, and quite honestly, it, it wasn't like any more talented than some of the teams that I've had in the past. It's just, we had three or four really good arms, obviously Logan Gilbert's in the big leagues right now. And, and uh, you know, pitching for Seattle and you have, Corey Kluber went to school here and Jake DeGrom still lives in the land area and he's around the field a lot. So I think in that metropolitan area, you know, especially when Kluber was with the Yankees two years ago, you know, you had a lot of Stetson being talked about up there. And so I think people, um, so I used to go to the New Jersey uh, underclass game and my first year at Stetson, everybody's like, Oh yeah, that's that place down South. And then when those two guys were in New York and we had some success in the regionals, I felt like I was the cat's meow when I walked around there. Everybody knew who Stetson was. So <laughs> we're starting to branch that out a little bit more as a, as a good school for people to choose um, for their academics and their athletics. Definitely. Yeah, no, it's uh, you got me hooked on both schools now. So I, I can see why you guys have as much success as you do. Coach Stowski coming up on 300 wins this year, I think 286. Um, again, success at a, a bunch of different schools and, and, and really respected as one of the top coaches in in d3 um what are the you know the rewards and challenges at at this level that that might be not at a at a d1 school you know what makes it such a unique thing and you know what makes it something that you've really you know been so successful at yeah i think the reward obviously is you know we're getting guys um the guys have to pay to go to our school so you're getting you're getting guys that um are are true and and it's not that guys aren't bought in and, and sacrifice at, at higher levels, but I mean, guys are paying a lot of money to go play for me. So, you know, that they are really going above and beyond to, to, to play the game and, and they don't have, we don't have across the board us. We're very blessed here to have resources and, and whatnot. But if you were to look at the D3 landscape, they don't have the resources, maybe the facilities, maybe the money to, fly places and eat at nice restaurants and, and travel the right way. And, and guys still make those sacrifices to do that. They you'll see hashtag D three life a lot on Twitter and you'll see, you'll see some of those things. And I, so I think you're, you're getting a, a very dedicated kid, you know, a kid that maybe didn't get seen and, and maybe didn't get a chance to play at certain travel leagues or play for a smaller type high school. So I think the reward sometimes is, is kind of getting the underdog kid um, that, you know, just got missed. And then you get a chance to kind of turn him into the player that he probably should have been or could have been. Um, and, and so that's always been rewarding in, in, in my career. Um, and, and then the guy that probably should have been missed, he, he wasn't a very good high school player, but and maybe shouldn't have been recruited, but maybe we saw something in him that we thought we can get out of him. And then we did get it out of him. And that's always been a, a really rewarding thing for our staff. The, the challenge is perception, uh, plain and simple. It's a perception of what the Division Three athletics is. And and I know Coach Tripper could tell you this because I'm sure he's played in these games. I mean, there's there's great baseball and there's bad baseball at every level. Um, and, and, you know, if you go to if you go to some of these top Division Three games, uh, I don't care who you are and where you've been. I mean, there's there's some great athletes and great players at these levels. And and um Sometimes, you know, us talking to parents and I've been out those recruit, I've been out these recruiting sites and they ask me, hey, you know, what level are you at D3? And it's like the black plague. They walk away from me because uh, I don't have athletic money. Right. So that that's a That's a hurdle that I have to, to get over is I don't have athletic money. But what I have to try and tell them is, you know, if your son 
has decent grades or or he's tested okay, he's gonna get a lot of a- a- academic money. And and what we have been able to do sometimes in a lot of Division threes around the country, sometimes we can package better with academic money than some scholarship schools can with their athletic money. Especially if he's a fence guy at the Division two or one level where they don't want to pour a lot of scholarship money into the kid. Our academic package can sometimes be better, and it's cheaper to come to our school with no athletic money. But it's hard to get into that conversation because we can't get over the Division three threshold, that perception. Um, so there's challenges. There's no doubt about it. And just the idea that every kid wakes up dreaming that he wants to play Division one baseball, and and we have to, we are not going to be the dream crusher. You know, I'm not, I can't start the phone call and say, oh, don't worry, you're not a Division one guy. Um, but uh, so it's very rewarding in the fact that the guys that are here, you know, they really buy in and they're, and, and that's really fun. Um, but you have to really get over that hurdle of, Hey, you're not going to play at Texas A&M man. Um, and, and if you can get them out of that idea, uh, they have a pretty good career. I feel like New Jersey would probably understand that message a little bit better, even because I think, and coach Trimper can probably vouch for this is, the one of the great strengths of the state is that there are so many great programs within an hour or two at all levels. You know, mm-hmm. whether it, you know, certainly, Coach, you're familiar with the NJAC, obviously running into them at, at different levels at, a, along the way, and how many great, you know, D3 baseball programs there are. But then also at the junior college level, at the, uh, you know, the D2 level with with the with the the Millersvilles and the Westchesters close by and you know, obviously Rutgers doing what it's doing now and Seton Hall being such a great program for so many years. Sound about right, Coach Trimper, that uh, that New Jersey's biggest strength is the diversity in uh, the the different levels of programs. Yeah, you know, I I think this is where I got to give my shout out to D3 baseball. You know, I play at Eastern Connecticut and, you know, we won a national championship in 90. So, we had 10 guys drafted off that team. So I wasn't one of them. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, that team could have, I mean, back then it was different. We played D ones all over the place and, you know, it, it didn't really matter. And, but heck, you know, the battles we had with coach Albie's teams at William Patterson and Montclair, you know, just, just all those with norms, uh, norms teams, you know, in Keene college. I mean, there's really great baseball in the state of New Jersey and, 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 and coach is exactly right. Um, you know, we, we get the kids sometimes that think they're D1 guys and we just don't have that many spots. I mean, that's what it comes down to is that we can it's it's hard to earn a scholarship. You know, we have to really do our homework and not make mistakes. And so, you know, sometimes even at our level, we package guys out better academically than we do athletically. So, um, you know, but with New Jersey, I think there's so many opportunities for for student athletes to play college baseball regionally um you know at at a high level um you know you said you mentioned something that was really intriguing millersville westchester right across the you know the d2 levels they've won national championships there i mean new jersey's won multiple national championships you know the northeast and connecticut go to southern maine with coach flaherty he's won three or four national championships Uh, so there's really good baseball all over the place that if you just find the right fit for yourself um to go to now with that being said I think what coach and, and I will, will agree on is, you know, it's all relative, you know, like coach is fighting against the, the you know, that, that Texas A&M kid that maybe won't go there and he needs to get one of those in his, in his program. All right. I, I'm doing the same thing. We got to get the Florida kid. That's not going to Florida, Florida state, Miami and try to right. sell them on the same thing. So it's, it's kind of relative that we're all trying to, do, you know, we're the, the margin of error is like splitting hairs sometimes on getting these kids to come to your program um, and that's why you try to, you know, showcase what you can offer. Um, you know, we both um, have the weather. We both came from, no, you know, colder places and there's, there's no argument. You know, I, I spent, this is my 30th year coaching. I spent, you know, 23 of them in the frozen tundra of Maine, you know, Maine. And, and now it's like, I'm never going back. Like, I, I'm sorry. I, I brainwashed myself that it's no big deal. Then I come down here. I'm like, oh my God what was I thinking? You know, So um, I just think our development that we can do to some of these kids, those New Jersey kids, we get back to that toughness thing again. You know, I see the ceiling as so much greater if you can coach them up. Like that's the part that I really feel is strong to me is, you know, I get a kid from Columbus high school and I've had probably 40 of the kids with coach Weber's 
kids down at Columbus High School in Miami. I'm great friends with the guy. Guys, kids, he said the Manhattan and Maine from that area. But they come in as an elite player. They played a ton of baseball, all right? They've seen a lot of ground balls. They've had, you know, triple the at-bats. And so I take them and I take all my coaching energy and I can get them from here to here, you know? That's as good as I am. But then I take the kid from New Jersey or Maine or, you know, and I'm using New Jersey example, and I take that kid and I get him to keep on going. Lorenzo Miola, that kid is going to be something special. And I'll tell you, we talk about him. I saw him as a wiry athletic kid with good genes because we had John here and Aiden's out in, well, you know, Oklahoma. And we recruited him, got him here. That guy has been the biggest jump of our 35-man, 40-man roster right now. He's gone from here to here so quickly um, because I've seen him take those steps, not only in the weight room, but he's picking things up. He's got athleticism. It's just that the speed of game is now he's starting to catch up to it. And we've been at it two months. So I think that that's where I like the New Jersey guys is that we can take them and we can actually feel like we're good coaches <laughs> because we coach them up a little quicker. We're like, Hey, I took this guy from here and brought him to here. So, uh, and we see that in the Northeast. I think, you know, one of the great stories that's going around now, and I want to kind of toot the horn a little is Jeremy Pena. Jeremy Pena was a five foot six, uh, 140 pound shortstop out of classical high school in Providence that my college roommate told me about when he's a sophomore. I went down there. It snowed the game out on Wednesday. I missed practice at name. We're supposed to play Stony Brook. The guys are all ticked at me because I didn't get back for practice. I stayed overnight. I watched Jeremy play. I loved his hands, but he's a little guy. And no one recruited Jeremy Pena. Now, all of a sudden, he's a superstar, and he's going to be a, you know, a, a, a you know, $100 million guy probably. They're like, what the heck happened to this guy? I'm like, look, we took him from a 5'7 guy to a 6'2 guy because he grew. And he, and he blew up and he just didn't play a lot of baseball besides going down with his father to the Dominican Republic in the wintertime. And, you know, obviously he had a great career at Maine and then he got drafted in 2018 and, you know, the story goes on, but there's, it's not a, it's not a Jersey guy, but it's a Northeast story of a kid that really just took off because he went from here to here at Maine. And then after he left Maine, boom, he just took off and went crazy. So um, another example of it. We want to remind everybody you can catch both these guys as part of the uh, the awesome lineup at the uh, at the Garden State Baseball Coaches Clinic. That's Friday, December 9th. The sign up info will be on the screen here. Um, and uh, in Kenilworth at Gamers Baseball, um, Coach Stowski, you're going to be talking about the running game a little bit. Is what I, I've been told, and uh, you know something obviously that's that's made an impact on you and your teams and. You know, give us a quick glimpse of what we're going to be hearing from you uh, at the at the clinic and, and, and why this is so important to be taught well. Well, so, you know, this this started a long time ago when I when I got my first head coaching job at 26. Um, I took over a program that had nine wins. OK, so 26 year old guy taking over a program, had nine wins in a city I'd never walked into before ever. So we were trying to figure it out. Right. And, uh, I walked into practice one day and realized we cannot hit. Okay. Well, of course you can't hit. There was, they only won nine games last year. If they could hit, they'd win more. And we had, uh, we had 26 freshmen on the team. Cause I, I got the job in early summer. There was 13 guys on the team. I had to go and recruit a whole new team. And, um, and we figured we had to figure out how to score runs without getting hits. And we just said, well, what if we steal second and we just hit the a ground ball to the second baseman a couple of times, we can score a run. You know, um, we just got to figure out how to get the first. And uh, so this this run game kind of got birth right then and there, you know, um, and, and we just we just kind of started teaching it to ourselves how to do it. And then that was in uh, 2010. And now you all of a sudden then we started recruiting our guys. We started winning games and then we started recruiting good players. And I got to Chicago and then we started going to the World Series and getting great players. And like coach said, you know, we were getting the players that should be going to, you know, the mid majors and going high level division two, because that's how you have to do it. If you're going to go to the World Series, get guys above your level. And we were hitting ball. We were hitting 340 as a team and scoring nine runs a game, but also stealing 130, 140 bases a game or, or, or a year. So. Um, what you're going to see a quick look at, we lead off differently than everyone else in the country. Um, so you're going to, the people that are going to be there are going to see a very different look at how you lead off. Um, 
every most people think that the closer you get to second base, um, the better chance you have of stealing that base. I believe the more efficient you are when you start your run, the better you have. Um, and what's more efficient than a, a guy that's running a hundred meter dash? What's more efficient than the wide receiver trying to score a touchdown? So if you think about it, there's only one athlete in all of sports that doesn't point to where he's running. And that's the guy that's leading off the first base. He's pointing at the third base dugout, isn't he? His feet are pointed at third base, the third base dugout. So our guys don't point at the third base dugout. We point to where we're going to run. So that gives you kind of a little bit of a glimpse of, of what you're going to see in December. Love it, Coach Trimper. We know that you're uh, Mr. Energy all the time anyway, so what better thing to have you talk about than, than defense and, and, and operating in practice at, at game speed and, and, and things that uh, you, know, you can do? And obviously, I got to think that a lot of that was born out of necessity as well in the Northeast where you're working with guys who don't have as many reps as, at, at, at game speed as, as others, but you know, what, are we, uh, what are we looking at and how is that taking place as far as the uh, Stetson philosophy. Yeah. You know, I think um, there's a lot of great coaches out there and, and like, I, I'm just sitting here like, gosh, I'm taking notes on coach. I can't wait to see this one. So maybe I can get better, but you know, there's great coaching out there. And I think that one of the things that has helped me in my career and, and have success over longevity, um, you know, and I think that's where you're running a good program, you know, like you might have a bad year and you go up and down and you come in fourth place and then you win I think there's a difference between a program and a team a team is built for one year you know you go in there get some talent and hopefully you pull it off and no one gets hurt building a program is it takes a lot of into it not only just coaching but fundraising and development and recruiting but it's also the coaching aspect is you got to try to find the little things to get the most out of your players we're teachers coach and I are teachers we should be able to go into a classroom and teach science and teach math. If we have enough knowledge, we should be able to do that and affect everybody, not just one or two. So I've always lived under the preference that I got to coach the heck out of my guys in a short period of time. Two reasons. One was because we don't have a lot of facilities, <laughs> you know, like, like we, we might have the, the gym because the softball team's coming in and, you know, so we got to get things done. And secondly, as I like to keep the attention going, I learned earlier on, you got these guys for like 10 minutes, man. Like, you know, they're in and out of this, this focus zone we talk about. I'm up there doing base running for two hours. I, I just wasted an hour and 50 minutes, you know? So that was always my philosophy. Then I get down to Florida, you know, after all those years in Northeast and I'm coaching like a Northeast coach and you know, I'm a new coach. So those guys are like not saying anything and they're sweating. And I'm like, we're not wearing shorts to practice. We're going to be tough. We're going to slide. We're going to practice and go. Now we got three hours to go. And after like three weeks, like my good captains came in like, coach, man, like we're freaking worn out. It's 94 with 100 percent humidity. And like, we're going. I'm like, that was pretty stupid. I just beat the heck out of them physically. So I've learned to, to kind of tone it back as far as our practices. But that doesn't mean we don't do a lot of our drills with a high impact. I think the biggest thing that coaches will task you is how do you get game speed? Like, that's the thing. Coach will agree with me on this. We get drill happy sometimes. You're doing pickoffs. You're doing bunt traps or bunt defense or first and thirds. It's just drill happy. And so it just kind of goes in motion. So I try to take a lot of things we're doing, whether we're doing pitching stuff, you know, infield, outfield, team defense. I try to do days that we do things that are what we would be labeled high impact or at least game speed so I can get that game, that division one speed or division three speed from high school the kids get caught up to it because as soon as I can get the kids to play at this college level game speed, we're going to win more games quickly. So, so I'm going to be talking a lot of drills that I've kind of instituted, you know, both in the Northeast and, and certainly down here with the weather um, that maybe people can kind of morph into what their facilities have to get most out of those practices. So the kids leave there like, man, we got something done today. Yep. No, it's uh, it's going to be an amazing event. Friday, December 9th, Garden State, second uh, second annual Garden State Coaches Clinic, um, Gamers Academy up in Kenilworth, as we said. Coach Mike Stowski, Mary Harden-Baylor, Coach Steve Tremper, Stetson University. Thank you both for stopping by, and we can't wait to see you in, uh, in about a month. Thanks Thank for you. having us.